Now I want to talk about the speed of sound in various materials, solids, liquids, and gases. Here's a table showing how the speed of sound varies with uh, the material that it's traveling through. And three particularly important ones that I want to point out here, sodium hexaf... Uh, actually, this is sulfur hexafluoride, S-U-L-F-U-R. Sulfur hexafluoride has a sound speed of 134 meters per second. Air is 343 meters per second. You'll get tired of that number after you've done a lot of homework problems. Um, I'm not expecting you to know that number. That's kind of a nice number to be able to trot out at parties and impress your friends with, that you know what the speed of sound in air is. 343 meters per second. It's about 1,000 feet per second, given the fact that a meter is about 3 feet. Uh, speed of sound in helium. Helium is a very light gas, and as you can see, the lighter the gas, the, the, the less massive each molecule in the gas is, the faster that sound propagates. And so that's the first observation here in this concept. Sound travels faster in lighter gases than it does in heavier gases. Uh, what about the difference between uh, the sound speed in gases versus liquids? Well, in gases where uh, all of them are less than 1,000 uh, meters per second, for these liquids, they're all greater than 1,000. So as a general rule, there are some gases that are faster than liquids. Um, uh, some, there are some exceptions to the rule, but the general rule is that, that liquids, the sound travels faster in liquids. Why? Because, um, and sound can travel through liquids, by the way. If you take a speaker and put it under water, you can cause sounds to travel through the water. The big difference is that the sound is attenuated or dissipated faster. There's more damping to the sound. It doesn't travel as well through liquids as it does through, through gases. But generally, uh, a liquid, since the molecules are closer together, they communicate quicker, and that causes the sound to propagate faster. Solids even faster, um, as the, these molecules uh, vibrate against each other. So sounds travel slowest in gases, uh, faster in liquids, and then fastest in solids. That's the way that works. A demonstration of the sound speed in helium. So I'm, I'm drinking in some helium here. We fill the, uh, the uh, balloon full of helium. With my lungs full of helium, things sound a little bit different. Okay, um, you can also do the same experiment in sulfur hexafluoride. Or I'm here, watch this. I'm going to slowly pull the lid off. Okay. So that should be perfect. Gary, would you take that little end off over there as well? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Oh, so that, let's see. that container is full oh, of uh, sulfur so hexafluoride. Let's float the boat. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Let's see if we can float the boat. Stay there, little guy. Tell me that's not the one for us. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that is awesome. Magic. Yeah. So, is that, no, it's okay. Push it around. It's that's okay. Crazy. So, this heavy gas is about six times heavier than the air that we breathe. And so, I just have it kind of like through a tube here. And so, I'm going to give us just a little bit more so you can see what's going on. Here's okay. what they use it for. Um, the uh, electrical engineers will flood a room or uh, you know part of a semiconductor or something with this material because it doesn't allow electricity to, it doesn't conduct electricity. So here's a taser. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so look. So when I put the taser down inside, here, watch this. When it goes down inside, it stops. Oh, it stops working. Oh. And then when I bring it back out again, oh, it wow. So they will keep it so if you don't want something for, uh, arcing from one place Doesn't to another. Conduct. But the coolest thing is this. Right. Because it's inert, you can breathe in, and, and you might see something different. Ready? So, okay. over. so yeah. just take your head way down inside <laughs> and breathe in. Breathe in. Ready? Now talk to the nice people. <laughs> I'm trying. Come here. Get in there. Awesome. All right, so. <laughs> so that's sulfur hexafluoride. Um, Heavy, heavy gas, very slow sound speed propagating. This is a demonstration of how you can 
exceed the sound speed with the tip of a whip. The way that it works is when you, when you crack the whip, this handle here is heavy. The leather near the, uh, near the handle is, is very thick. It's massive. The mass printing length is very large. So that means sound speed is small through that. But as you proceed to the end of the, uh, the tip of the whip, that the diameter and the mass per unit length gets smaller and smaller and smaller until right at the tip you just see a little tiny piece of thin piece of leather at the end of the whip. Well, that mass per unit length is very small. And since the sound speed goes like the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length, you're dividing by that very small mass per unit length and the speed goes up. So you're able to concentrate that energy that you created with the, with the motion of your arm, send that wave forward to the end of the whip, and then cause that little tip of the whip to, um, to travel at a speed that's greater than the speed of sound. And that's what creates the, uh, the whipping, the, the cracking sound of a whip. So this is a, my one chance in life to, to do the Indiana Jones thing. I hope you appreciate it. Okay, uh, lightning strikes. If you see lightning and hear thunder at exactly the same time, you are dead. So what if you see the lightning and then hear the thunder later? Guess what? You're not dead. And how does it work? If you, uh, one mile is, uh, is about 1.6 times 10 to 3 meter. Um, the easiest way to actually do this calculation is to say, well, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, or roughly about 1,000 feet per second. A mile is about 5,000 feet, 5,280 feet. So how long does it take for sound to travel one mile? It's going 1,000 feet per second. You need 5,000 feet to go a mile. So it takes about five seconds for sound to travel one mile. Well, so that means that if there's a lightning strike that's a mile away, then you're going to, since, since the speed of light is almost virtually instantaneous, it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, it takes a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a second for that light, the, the lightning, to travel from the lightning strike to you. So we can essentially think about that as being instantaneous. Then if the lightning strikes a mile away, then it takes um, uh, instantaneously, you see the lightning strike, and then five seconds later, you hear the thunder, you hear the sound. It's also interesting when you, when you listen to the sound of thunder, it's a <laughs> So it starts with high frequencies, and then it goes down to the low rumbling frequencies of the thunder. Um, reason is, the sound travels fast. There's dispersion of the air. We'll talk about this in later chapters. Sound travels fast. Higher pitched sounds travel faster than lower pitched sounds. That's why you don't hear the all of the boom together. You hear the, the high crackling sounds first. But the bottom line is, if the, if the lightning strike is a mile away, uh, the instant that you see the lightning, you're going to say 0,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. If, the, if then you hear the thunder, you know it was a mile away. If it's less than that, uh, less than a mile away. If it's 10 seconds uh, between the lightning, seeing the lightning and hearing the thunder, then it's two miles away.